I'm uh, Jack J. Welcome to the Riot API guide. I'm not going to monetize this video or anything, but uh, I will just do a shout out to my own product, which is the Itero Drafting Coach. It's an artificial intelligence tool that can optimize your draft by telling you which of your champions are the best to pick. You can either get it at itero.gg or you can get a downloadable version which comes into game with you uh, at Overwolf. Just search Overwolf Itero Drafting Coach. Okay, I hope you enjoy the video. I feel like I'm I'm playing one of those memory games because uh, each intro I try and summarize what we've uh, what we've covered already and uh, so I, I'm probably boring you all so I'll, I'll not do that anymore uh, and I'll just say that this video is going to be about the rate limit key so APIs uh, basically aren't free for alls you can't just ask for as much data as you want and and Riot aren't going to send it all back. Uh, they, they limit how much data you can get. Even the biggest companies, uh, the biggest websites like UGG, will have a limit that they have to play within, right? They, they, they've got to send um, a certain amount of requests within a certain amount of time, or they can only send a certain amount of requests within a certain amount of time. Now, because we are uh, developers and we're on a developer key, our limit is going to be very low. So if we go back to developer, you'll see your key, your rate limits here. So 20 requests every one second, it's very unlikely that you break that because you need to do quite technical work to send that many requests off so quickly. But certainly 100 requests every two minutes is, um, is something that most people will run into. And it's a very common issue, a very common debugging problem that people have is uh, I've hit the rate limit, what do I do? Or I keep getting this error, what, what's causing it? Um, so we'll address that in this video. And the way we'll do that is we have these matches from the previous video. And if you remember, uh, there's a hundred of them. So just, just within the key. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to, um, I'm just going to add matches, uh, I think it's step matches at the end of matches. So all I'm doing here is just taking that same list of, uh, screw that up. Uh, so we reset that. There we go. We're, send, we're, we're taking that list of 100 matches and we're just sticking it to the end again. So we have the same list twice. The reason I'm doing that is because then it's going to be greater than 100. So now we have 200 matches to go through. And going back to two videos ago, we created this loop. What we're going to do is just send that loop off again. And what you'll see is that what it's doing is sending a request off to get data about a particular game. And then it's printing out whether I won or not. Now you're going to see some embarrassing losing streaks uh, because I was testing my uh, my app, my Otero drafting coach, and it, <laughs> it required me to make some pretty int picks uh, during the development phase. So you'll see a couple of losing streaks coming in here. Now, once it gets to the hundredth, bam, we're going to hit an issue. And the reason we've hit this issue is because we've now sent off a hundred requests and it's taken less than two minutes. So Riot have said like, hey, you're asking for too much data, you need to stop. And the way they do that is by uh, just returning uh, an error. And we can look more into that error by just sending off a random request. So I have an API URL saved from uh, one of the other videos. So I'm just gonna say request, get that API URL. And we're gonna get that 429. So if we go into the portal, go to APIs, uh, remember we, to, to get this data, we're using the summoner, uh, the match v5 match ID key, uh, uh, re request URL. And then we're just gonna scroll down and look what 429 means. There we go, rate limit exceeded. So that's why we're getting that error because we've sent over a hundred requests off within two minutes and our limit is a hundred requests every, uh, every two minutes. So what we need to do is build in some protection, some way of handling when this comes up. So we know that the response, so if we do that, that's how we've got it in our code, is 200. So the way you extract that is just by doing status code. And then we can say, is that 200, right? Uh, or is that 429? So when we send off this response, we're getting it back. It's for, uh, we're now within the rate limit again. So what I'll do is I'll just send this off again. So we go outside the rate limit. Uh, it won't take as long because uh, I've already sent off so many that we're probably, probably going to hit that rate limit quite quickly. 
or at least not quickly enough. So we'll have to wait it go down to 200, uh, go down to the 100 mark. And once that's finished, this is going to return 429. And then we can check just to see if that does actually equal 429 as the status code. So there we are. Send off the request, get a 429, get the status code 429. Are they the same thing? Yes. So therefore, we have hit the rate limit. So what we can do is update this get match data. So if we scroll up to get match data, and what we want to do is say if the resp dot status code. So if the status code is equal to 429, we have to do something about that. Now the way I deal with it, uh, and it's not the most efficient way, but it's certainly a great way to learn, is to use this library, which is time. Because time allows you to sleep. Now I can't remember if yeah, so it's time dot sleep. And that's just going to sleep for five seconds. So it's literally not going to do anything. So if we can create a little function to, to test that, we'll just say good night, uh, good night, and good morning. Brilliant. Good night. Sleeps for five seconds. And then good morning. So what we're going to do is if we hit this error, the 429, which means we've hit our rate limit. All we're going to do is sleep. And I'm going to say for 10 seconds, and I'm going to print a little warning as well to say, hey, I'm sleeping. Now, the problem here is that um, in the current, it, in the way the function currently works, is it will just it will just do this request. It'll send it off. It will get the error. It will sleep for 10 seconds, and then it will try extracting the JSON anyway and return it. But obviously, that JSON is not going to be there because we know that we had a sleep. So what we need to do is upgrade this to be a while. And I'll explain why. Boom. Continue. So now what it's going to do is while this is still running, it's going to send off the request. It's going to uh, check if it's a, a 429, check wherever it needs to sleep or not. If it does, it's going to sleep. It's going to sleep for 10 seconds and then that continue is going to send it right back to the very top and it's going to do it again and if it's still in the light break limit it's going to do it again and it's just going to keep going and the only way it breaks this cycle is when this part isn't hit in other words the response status code isn't 429 and when that happens it will carry on as usual okay uh to 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 get that this bit to work i uh you add while true then that should uh, should run through, and also I, I forgot this should be should be tabbed in as well. Uh, otherwise, it just ends up in an infinite loop, constantly sending it off. This way, once it's finished and passed this test, it will immediately uh, just return the data and cancel out the function. So let's grab that, and just stick it somewhere a bit more clear, back to where we were originally. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just add an extra part here. I'll add the game number. So we'll start with one and we'll print the game number each time then we'll print the match id then we'll print whether they won or not print a little space just to make it clear uh, and then we'll add one to the game number so it's counting one two three four now when we send this off what you'll see is that like last time uh, the first hundred requests are going to go through successfully however once we've reached that uh, hundredth one we're going to run into that error this time the error is being dealt with because the status code of 429 is being caught in this if. And then when it's being catched, rather than failing, it's just going to sleep and then try again. And it's going to sleep and try again. And it's going to keep going until eventually it gets a response back. And once it gets a response, it's going to finish and return the data as per usual. So this prevents any issues. So hopefully, yeah, here we go. On the 101st request, we run into an issue. We start sleeping. Now, you may be thinking, I want to do some really elaborate AI or look at some data across lots and lots of accounts or whatever it may be. How could I possibly do it with these rate limits? Now, remember, these rate limits are only for the developer key. Once you've actually got a product ready to be used, um, and it doesn't have to be a finished product, it's just something that you can show to write and say, hey, this is what I'm building. Uh, they will review it and they will decide whether you uh, are approved or, or not. And if you're approved, you will get a much larger rate limit. Uh, something around, I think the starting point is around 30,000 requests every 10 minutes. So that will give you plenty of space to work with. 
And the way you do that is go into the portal and just register your product, type some information in about what it's going to do and how useful it is for the community. Uh, and then they review it. It usually takes somewhere between two and six weeks to get a, re a response back from them. Uh, I've done it a couple of times, one with JungGG, which now uh, is, is still around, but, but, but not updated. Uh, and now more recently, itero.gg and the itero drafting coach uh, both have the higher rate limit. So now uh, we, we've slept for about, I don't know, 60 seconds, 70 seconds or so, uh, which means that we're coming to the end of the, the, the sort of the rate uh, limit window, which is two minutes. And once we pass that, it's going to start sending off the request again, um, as usual, and we'll, we'll get the data. So there we go. We start finding out true or false or not, and that will carry on running until uh, it's finished all 200. So that's uh, the video on the right API, uh, API limit and how to get around it. Um, I hope you enjoyed, hope you find it useful. It's something that people run into issues with all the time. So hopefully that gets you over one of the early stumbling blocks uh, that people find when they're learning about the API.